गुड इवनिंग फ्रेंड्स गुड इवनिंग सर ब्रह्म प्रोफेसर ब्रह्म सिंह हॉर्टिकल्चर फाउंडेशन बी एस एच एफ ए नॉट फॉर प्रॉफिट ऑर्गेनाइजेशन एंड माई सेल्फ वेलकम यू ऑल टू द टॉक नंबर ट्वेंटी थ्री ऑफ दिस सीरीज नेम्ड एज फॉर एच अर्बन हॉर्टिकल्चर फॉर हेल्थ एंड हैप्पीनेस बी एस एच एफ is thankful to bear semenis to sponsor this webinar series i am happy to welcome co organizers dr pritam kalya icr rafi ahmed kidwai awardee former head of the division vegetable sciences and coordinator school of horticultural sciences icr iri new delhi and dr shalendra rajan who is traveling but he is very much there in the <coughs> webinar former director icr central institute of subtropical horticulture lucknow the webinar today is on medicinal and aromatic plants we call them in uh, day to day day language maps maps medicinal and aromatic plants for health and happiness by dr jitendra kumar who is presently director institute of pesticide formulation technology gurugram haryana and formerly director and project coordinator icr directorate of medicinal and aromatic plant research anand gujarat bshf is thankful to dr jitendra kumar ji for honoring its request to speak on maps medicinal aromatic plants grow in almost as you know terrestrial and some aquatic ecosystems around the world maps play a valuable and important role in economic social cultural and ecological aspects of particularly the local communities in the world maps can be called as botanicals that provide people with medicines to prevent diseases maintain health or cure ailments besides some other things cultivation of uh, maps is feasible uh, through diversification enterprise for many small scale farmers as demand for these is very high trade opportunities are increasing and the income generating potential is also good since time memorial maps have made a significant contribution in human health and well being as well as contributing to farm household income generation through trade dr jitendra kumar would enrich our knowledge on these plants friends questions can be raised uh, in comment or chat box which will be answered after the talk now i request my colleague dr pitam kalya to formally introduce the speaker this evening dr kalya please thank you sir am i audible sir yeah yes uh, thank you good morning uh, good evening uh, most respected professor brahm singh ji founder chairman of uh, bshf and uh, my colleague dr shailendra rajan co organizer of uh, this webinar series and today's speaker none else than professor jitendra kumar ji uh, welcome for today's speaker uh, professor dr jitendra kumar ji who is presently director institute of pesticide formulation technology at gurugram in haryana 
uh, he has uh, served as director and project coordinator of ICR Directorate of Medicinal and Aromatic Plants uh, research uh, located at Anand in Gujarat. And he has also been professor and principal scientist at the Division of uh, Agricultural Chemicals at Indian Agriculture Research Institute, New Delhi. Having more than 30 years of experience, Professor Jayendra Kumar made significant contribution in the area of uh, agrochemicals, including botanicals, medicinal plants, and uh, nanotechnology, and uh, developed technologies, processes for environment-friendly crop protection, products, packages, and practices for farmers' use and industrial application. As the director of ICR, uh, Directorate of Medicine and Aromatic Plants Research and Institute of Pesticide Formulation Technology, Dr. Jatender Kumarji facilitated the research on medicinal and aromatic plants and got released five improved varieties for cultivation by farmers and uh, the research work of, uh, on development of technologies, uh, which are 20 for the environment friendly agrochemicals formulations and transferred to industries respectively, ensuring food security, safety, enhancing livelihood and protecting human health and environment. Professor Jitendra Kumarji developed linkages with other ICR and CSR and other institutes, NGOs, UNIDO, universities and uh, industries to address diverse issues. Dr. Jitendra Kumar has been the convener of uh, IUPAC sponsored three international conferences on agrochemicals, uh, protecting crop health and uh, natural environment uh, during 2008, 12, 16 and 2020 organized at uh, New Delhi. And uh, now he has been nominated as chairman for 15th IUPAC International Congress of uh, Crop Protection Chemistry to be held in January uh, 10 to 23 uh, in 2023. Professor Jitendra Kumar has uh, uh, more than 400 scientific publications, including 24 patents, patent applications, 170 research papers, and uh, 11 books. He has guided nine students, and he is a recipient of several awards and recognitions, including ICFRI NIM Award, INSA Royal Society Bilateral Exchange Fellowship, Rothamsted Research, uh, UK 2004, and NRDC Meritorious Innovation Award 2010. Professor Jitendra Kumar has uh, served as member of uh, Academic Council, Board of Management, and Financial Management Committee of universities, research advisory committees of institutes, task forces, and president or secretary of professional societies, fellow of National Academy of uh, Biological Sciences, and also he's fellow of uh, National Academy of Agricultural Sci Sciences with wide experience on agrochemicals especially and uh, uh, directing these different institutions. Uh, doc, uh, Dr. Jitendra Kumar has wide experience uh, in this area, area of uh, medicine and aromatic plants and agric agrochemicals especially. So we are uh, lucky to have him as speaker today. Uh, therefore, not taking much time between speaker and uh, viewers I invite uh, Professor Jitendra Kumarji to take the floor and deliver, deliver his talk. Dr. Jitendra Kumarji.
the screen is being shared hello hello the okay, screen not, is not... being shared but sir uh, you have you will have to open your slides share ppt ah good good go to the first slide yes and uh, okay, full sir. screen full screen yeah it is okay yeah yeah just okay 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 respected madam shri professor bhram singh ji my senior colleague dr kaliya at seen dr rajan at seen dr rana as well in while uh, the screen was introduced good evening and good evening to all other participants i express my gratitude to the organizers for inviting me this very important uh, webinar and more particularly the topic which is very near to my heart medicinal aromatic plants for health and happiness i am really grateful to you sir because this is a very good opportunity to me to further interact with the speakers sir medicinal aromatic plants for health and happiness the topic is chosen by you and opted to me a really very timely chosen topic and the topic of the day i wish to start my presentation with the words basically medicinal plant for health health is a if you see i will start with the quote of the j stanford health is a state of a body wellness is a state of being and if you look at take care of your body it is the only place you have to live jim rohan has rightly highlighted and quoted health wellness is the composition of and interaction between the spirit body and mind and the another word sir has introduced that and give emphasis that along with the health happiness is a another key component which will complement you know the this thing so if you look at the happiness lowers your risk for cardiovascular disease lowers your blood pressure enables better sleep improve your diet allow you to maintain a normal body weight similarly as sir has rightly and very precisely had given a highlight about the medicinal plants what is their role how they are being used in our day to day domain how they are present and how we can get it benefited from these plants so i will be sharing with certain aspects including the different type of the general general all general about the medicinal aromatic plants and the plants which are being historical which is being used for bio prospecting and for other many other aspects so as we know biodiversity india is very rich and we see the population area of this so india has one of the 12 world mega biodiversity one of the eight center origin of crop plants india is a gene rich center remarkable success in ex situ conservation third largest base collection in ngb and more than 300 crop species <coughs> are listed there and if we look around you know the 10 bio biogeographic regions of india professor ram singh has already highlighted it that there is no corner of the land basically where the medicinal plant will not be happening so if you look at the biogeography regions of the india trans himalayas the 700 species are there himalayas 2500 species desert 500 semi arid western ghats and similarly deccan peninsula gangetic plain northeast india island and coast so whatever the you see that the, it has been depicted in the map that how the diversity is there and if you look at the regions the climatic things arid semi arid dry semi humid humid and par humid that makes the india a very very unique country having providing the by plant biodiversity and particularly the biodiversity with respect to the medicinal plant i just attempted to summarize there may be many many species but i attempted to you know incorporate the some of the very important uh, plant species basically which are being grown and found in the different 
uh, areas. The, if we look at the tropical area, other Thoda, Vesica, Endocafis, Pelliculata, Equilaria, Agaloza, Centella, Sieteca, Rascura, Leta, Osimum Basilicum, Planta, Verosa, Vedania, Somnifera, Vitex, Lagundo, Pedaria, Fitida, and so on. Coming to the subtropical, the Artemisia Maritime, Hidnocarpus Kurdi, Lavendulu, Listes Cubica, Mikuna Purius, Pogostemon, Carolin, and so on. Temperate climate, the important species of the temperate climate, which is being exploited for the bioprospecting as well as for the developing of the different drugs. The Captis Titia, Janinium, Naplensis, Panax, Pseudo Ginseng, Swarcia Chirayata, Pico Raija, Prova, Satyrum, Naplensis, Rubia, Cardifolia, Texas Bacata, Orchis, Latifolia. If we go the Alpine, Aconitum, Ferox, Heterophyllum, Elysium, Griffi, Barberis species, Podophyllum, Hexandrum, Redem, Imodi, and so on. India is the past, uh, uh, past uh, record of the uses of the herbal medicine. If we look at, you know, this uh, with this diagram, the, the different uh, system of the treatment, whether it is Ayurveda, Yunani, Siddha, Amji, and the modern. All together, you look at, you know, that the different species are being utilized for the different purpose of uh, treatment and the way of the different treatments. And the, the Indian flora, the more than 17,500 species are there. So Indian system of medicine is being perfect with the uses of the medicine aromatic plant. So there is a long story all along with that. If you see the Ayurveda, only the formulation type varies, but the source of the medicines remains the plants. <clears throat> Similarly, the Yunani, there with the different churna, this is laid and the, some, the, some type of the different things will be there, but ultimately the products are derived from the, the plants, the bioactive principles. So, friends, it is basically at most uh, important to understand that the plants are the rich source of the secondary metabolites and which basically are responsible for imparting different type of the bioactivity to combat, you know, different type of the organism to cure the disease and so on. And India, I will be sharing some of the species which is being used for the bias prospecting for the developing the modern medicines as well. So this is the bioactive principle basically, which is responsible for providing the, you know, the desired type of the bioactivity and whether even you see the homeopathic medicine, that there is the alcoholic extracts are being used, but ultimately, you know, the these are the secondary metabolites. So this is the chemistry which prevails, you know, for providing us the solution for the medical health. Besides, you know, these uh, medicinal plants are being used for the different other purposes. Nowadays, these are in the, the, the in the market for the, in the different the herbal teas is quite common. It is being used intermediates for the drugs manufacture because we can, you know, uh, modify the the pulp, uh, the uh, secondary metabolites derived from the plants for developing the another molecule which can have the more potency. Similarly, the medicinal plants are being used health food in day to day. We see, you know, even our the food system is you know, so good in Indian system. We use the different spices, and the different spices are having the different components, you know, different secondary metabolites, and which you know prevent us the disease. If, um, prevention is uh, better than cure. So, our, like uh, kadhi patta, and so if you look at, you know, sanjana, so many things we al always use: lasun, adrak, curcumin, different components. So all these. They are the source of secondary metabolites, and we have, you know, the, the, not only the balanced diet, but the, that provides the perfection to by adding, you know, the, this type of the spices that makes uh, our food uh, healthy. So, medicinal, medicinal plant scenario in India: friends, 80% supply of the raw drugs comes from the wild. The annual consumption of the raw drugs about 3,19,500 tons. 1,134 species are cultivated. And 160 are partially cultivated illegal trade of high value medicinal plants that is the very uh, important point and as a great concern export of the raw material about us dollar 100 to 114 million per year the data is little bit uh, old so probably but uh, the it might or the figures might have been changed but the scenario is still remains so now coming to the scene seeing the global market for the medicinal herb it is a great uh, you know market for the medicinal herb 
So 80% of the world population depends on the traditional system. Even not only in India, if you talk about the China, there is the traditional Chinese system of medicine and the African countries as well. So most of the world's population depends upon the traditional system. And again, the source of uh, the, their medicine is the, the plants only. So China and India are the two largest producers of medicinal plants and accounts for 40% global biodiversity. The, uh, India biodiversity, we had just discussed in the preceding slides. China has established itself as a major exporter of the traditional herbal medicine in the world market with the export to the tune of 5 billion US dollars per year, as against about 240 million US dollars by India. So India is, you know, although it is second, but uh, we are quite low, and this is the point where the people who are engaged in the medicinal and herbatic plant research or the manufacturer or the other stakeholders, we have to see, you know, why being the good, having the good biodiversity, we still we are having quite at a lower level in terms of the when we're talking about the business and the marketing. The simple reason is that the we people export the raw material basically uh, or the extract and the other countries define, develop the products from out of our extract and again, you know, the export to the different countries. So India needs to organize and to achieve a significant share in the growing market. Friends, this is the, uh, always a point of concern basically because as I had uh, discussed with you that the medicinal plants, the most 80% are being derived from the wild. But can the increasing demand be suffice with the the from the wild sources if we have to popularize and we have to bring you know into our system or to uh, complete the requirement of the burgeoning population we have to understand certain other facts so this is the uh, habit wise distribution traded medicinal plant species the trees 26 percent are there hubs are 41 percent and 15 percent 18 percent are the shrubs the Another point I want to make it the part wise trade of the raw drug of the medicinal plant. While harnessing the drugs from the medicinal plant, we have to give emphasis basically on the renewable part of the plant, basically, like for, if it's the flowers, if the fruits, or the leaves, exudates, and so on. If the, some uh, medicine is being derived from the wood or the stem bark, where the plant uh, itself is sacrificed. So we have to find out the alternatives basically of uh, those medicinal plants. Otherwise, that and otherwise that will lead to extinct the species. And this has had already happened in the past. And we have to learn the lesson from the past history, where is a certain plant like uh, the from the taxol is being uh, derived from that plant that, that uh, has been became the extinct species like the ginseng and so. So there may be many more species of the medicinal plant which is being became extinct of because of the over exploitation so if we uh, to see the world care, healthcare situation 2050 the factors uh, we are very much uh, uh, well versed about the different factors and the major health problems which is the cancer is uh, quite common hypertension and diabetes i heard that the india's 60 percent population has undergone under diabetes and the malaria viral and dengue chicken dunia this type of disease which are the vector bone disease basically, algae and others. So the, we have to address these problems. Uh, hypertension, particularly diabetes is quite common. In the every household, you know, the patients are there. Patients are there. Almost 70-80% uh, people are the patients. So we have to address all those. So some of the plants, as I told you, that, uh, that there is a need of, uh, you know, developing the medicine from the by cultivating the, and uh, focusing those plants and promoting those plants basically which can be used in the diversified type of the disease so i attempted to summarize few the hypertension the google sarpaganda terminia species are there for the diabetes these are the all the, what i've been discussing with you these are based on the scientific evidences scientific evidences are there wherein uh, these are the plants are being used for uh, making the different kind of the medicines so cancer, the cocoa, Garcinia species, Anova, Dengue, the Kalmeg has been quite effective, immunomodulation, Ashwagandha, Kalmeg, Malaria, Artemisia, Artemisia, Anova, Woman Health, the Chatavri, Asperger's, and these are uh, used, you know, for the ancient times, the Parkinson or Alzheimer's disease, velvet beans, Mukura, Puriens, and uh, from Ashwagandha, uh, 
seeds in US, the one drug has been developed and it is being registered from the which is being prepared from the seeds of the Asuganda. Although the, the, no work has been done in India on that aspect, but uh, in the US it is being registered uh, in, uh, uh, product there. Laxative is a goal and the Sena. Commonly used herbal medicine. You may be aware all about, but uh, just to refresh, uh, the, uh, just brush up the memory, the different plants uh, which is very widely being used. And uh, as I discussed uh, earlier, that uh, some of the plants had become, you know, the extinct because of the over exploitation. And some of these plants are these uh, Athenica, Ginseng, Sapo, Palmetto, Ginkgo, Sand Zone, Watt, Valerian, Garlic. Garlic is uh, not uh, uh, this, uh, being. Uh, Exploited garlic is apparently used, but garlic is a, a being the presence of thylacin makes it a wonderful high cholesterol, hypertension, respiratory infection, controlling this thing. So, <clears throat> and uh, these the morphine, cadmium, dioxin, atropine, scopolamine, paclitaxel, quinine, vinblastine, vincristine, all these uh, chemicals. Belonging to the different class, well, the alkaloids, uh, some are terpenes, some are the steroids. Most of the, the, uh, the chemicals are the alkaloids which are being used for the different uh, diseases. If you go, just uh, go through this, the all of, almost all short of the disease is uh, being covered, and uh, the, these uh, different uh, components uh, extracted from the different plant species being uh, used for the diverse kind of the therapeutic use. This is the chemistry of some of the plants and uh, highlighted the paclitaxel. As you see, you know, the, the so complex structure. Can we think of the human can think of uh, to synthesize so, so uh, bigger and the complex molecules? So friends, the plants are the biggest chemist basically, which can synthesize, you know, so the huge complex structures, which is not possible uh, to the uh, human being or if, it, if we are able to even synthesize, the cost uh, viability will not will, will work out. So we have to depend uh, upon the, this uh, medicinal plants. And these are some more uh, plants as a source of anti-cancer agents. Now I'm discussing some of the crops and uh, with the perspective of uh, their cultivation and uh, with the perspective of their uses. So isabgol is being used for gastrointestinal tissues and bowel, the diarrhea, managing Colorectal cancer, hemorrhoids, type 2 diabetes, and the cholesterol. And uh, the people who are having allergy nowadays with the gluten. So this is the one component. It is being used uh, as a filler in the place of the wheat, wherein the wheat flour is used for making the biscuit and all. And uh, it is getting the lot of popularity. And in India, it is being grown in the Rajasthan, Gujarat, and Madhya Pradesh. It's a goal ranked first in the total total export of the medicinal plants from India. The every year about 90,000 tons of the ISAP gold is required to meet the domestic demand. So ISAP gold export is growing at 15% every year and Indian dominates the world market 80% share in the production and export. So this plant has a huge potential of the business as well uh, because of its uh, good quality. Vidanya somnifera, we had just discussed, this can be again very diversified crop various varieties being used and uh, it is uh, widely grown Rajasthan, MP, UP. It is being used for anti-inflammatory, anti-tumor, anti-stress, antioxidant, immunomodulatory or hemopoietic and rejuvenating properties. Andrographis paniculata is another species which is grown and uh, this is the data basically the production, the Gujarat, UP and MP is the most favorable uh, you know the area for this so this is being used for liver complaints fever and as an anti-inflammatory and immunostimulant cassia angustifolia most commonly known as the, the sana the herb is used as an expectorant wood dresser anti-dysentric carminative and laxative india sana is handy in treating loss of appetite hepatomegaly malaria, skin disease, and jaundice, and anemia, etc. So these, the plants basically, I just chosen for, because I will not be able to cover, you know, the most 
so large species of the medicinal plants with their properties but uh, i am attempting to discuss with you the most prominent and which can be more commercialized you know, through the which can be more commercialized through the cultivation wherein the technology of the extraction of the material the technology for the estimation technology for the quality control so in my slides i am highlighting you know the perfect uh, chemistry is being uh, concluded in those proper quality parameters has been standardized and uh, which can be you know propag propagated through the crops and the production can be uh, through the cultivation <coughs> sarka soka this is another plant uh, this has a uh, spasmogenetic and antibacterial anti plantation anti tumor anti progestinol anti estrogenic acti activity and menorrhagia and anti cancer properties terminalia species this is also widely used it is anti inflammatory antioxidant anti cancer and uh, digestion anicostema auxiliary most commonly known as marmejo indian white hat and the different names are there it is anti diabetic anti oxidant and hepatoprotective mucuna purians the gona concha is the another name and the common another the common name which since it beans is like the horse i horse type so its name is the horse i bean it is being used for the parkinson disease cytotoxic increase in sperm count mm -hmm. this is uh, the latest uh, the report uh, which is being re reported that uh, the plants can be used for the uh, in, to cure the infertility and uh, can increase the sperm count aspergillus racemosus being used for the gastric ulcer dyspepsia and as and as a galactogog acalyptalba most uh, uh, commonly known bhangraj or some in area it is known as the bhangraj and it is being used for the alopecia for the jaundice healing the liver disorder and the skin disease gymnema silvestri most commonly the gurmar it is very good medicine for the diabetic anti diabetic stomatic diuretic and the cough suppressant pokum garcinia this is the nowadays the quite popular plant uh, and uh, northeast regions so this, uh, this different varieties are there the different uh, species are there for the pokum so it is being used for weight loss joint pain body diarrhea to increase bowel movement and for treating worms and the parasites another plant which uh, and uh, which we have, we had uh, you know done some work uh, at iri also is the flanthus neururi we had isolated the this uh, compounds from the this uh, flanthus neururi and it has been used for, for what was additive in the medicinal formula the entire plant is used for this purpose the elements that this medicine can relieve as kidney stone gallbladder elements hepatitis etc Uh, this the my taken from our own work cupetorium the uh, adenophorum this is being used analgesic and uh, anti inflammatory property it is uh, being grown as a wild variety and it is threat in the hill, hill areas basically so it is invasive plant causing several problems so we attempted to isolate some of the compounds out of it which is uh, which is being used for the different uh, purpose beside this uh, what are in the common some of the trees uh, and the plants which are uh, you know in our surroundings in whether we are in the villages whether urban areas and uh, these are the plants uh, which are which can also be used as the for preventing that is we cannot say the medicine but uh, can be used uh, basically for the purpose of uh, treating different uh, elements jujuba jujuba the fruit and its seeds are used to alleviate stress and traditionally for anti fungal anti bacterial anti ulcer anti inflammatory purpose and sedation anti spastic anti fertility wide range of uh, you know the applications are there in this 21 compounds are there including 10 triterpenoids and two sterols six flavonoids and three uh, sericosides so all is all together the secondary metabolites which impart this activity this the another purposefully i had uh, you know uh, from the our ancient times also and uh, some of the plants which is being you know because of their properties are worshiped basically the tulsi is uh, one example which is being you know in his uh, household that we grow the tulsi 
and uh, the uses is we are well versed about the different applications one of the plant you know this is a uh, uh, is cyanide area most normally known as khejri uh, this is you know all in the wasteland and if uh, this plant is uh, basically has the history and it is being worshipped by the people of uh, the rajasthan and uh, the the more trees in the, uh, in the field of the farmer then it appears to be that the more prosperous and that sort of concept so to cite this example that uh, sometimes we you know miss uh, the medicinal plants which is all around uh, in, in our, our surrounding itself for that uh, we need not to go anywhere but uh, only thing that we have to utilize and uh, we have to understand its application how useful it is artemisinin the some of the uh, i just wish to share some more uh, which has been commercially quite popular so i attempted to include all those uh, plants as well artemisinin the 2015 nobel prize in physiology or medicine has been jointly awarded to the inventor of this this lady worked for her work on the artemisinin as an anti malarial agent from artemisia nova a plant that has been used reducing fever for centuries and a well documented traditional chinese medicine this is a uh, commercial exploitation is there moringa olifera you go to the google sites amazon and all you will find you know these are the plants which are in surroundings but uh, the intelligent people and industry has taken up and for the commercialization antibiotic anti inflammatory property treat arthritis rheumatism gout cramps sexually transmitted disease and oils so neem based bioactives neem has uh, diversified for the different use it is being used as unani medicine also in vegan ayurveda for the different purpose whether we uh, talked about the antiviral properties of the leaves and the, some other uh, properties because uh, when the this uh, some bees generally say the mata well, the, uh, it happens you know in the childhood then uh, the neem patti was kept you know at the uh, just under the pillow so that uh, that can have the anti viral properties and uh, it has no anti fungal properties for the its oil as anti fungal property diverse uh, application as there and it is most uh, most commercialized plant basically like i used to say and uh, with a diversify application not only the medicine it is a good bioactive for uh, the uh, for the control of the different kind of the pest as well the value addition is very important basically as i discuss in my uh, second or third slides how india can you know the harness the full potential of the uh, business and the commercialization when we talks about uh, the doubling the farmers income and for improving this because we are exporting most of the material uh, you know the, the crude form to the different countries so i i just wish to uh, give by this example how we can fetch more money and can be you know key player because prime minister himself is uh, emphasizing the, in the each area that uh, we have to be the art nirbhar we are art nirbhar but on the other hand we have not to waste our material which is you know, the biodiversity by saying sending it if just see that the plant material 30 to 40 rupees a kg the, the dry material is being purchased by the our uh, this ayurvedic uh, companies or the uh, people who are in this business endocarpus panicular extract if it is 10% it is sold for that 25 usd per kg if endocarpus the percentage 30 then its price will be 110 usd higher the content higher the value it can fetch in the market because ultimately the this is a, can be used for formulating the products basically because if we are sending the raw material the transportation cost and the other things makes it uh, Uh, for no, it makes it look costly if we can extract and develop the products and export the developed products that we can fetch the more money if we see the annual consumptions uh, of uh, the some of the most uh, used plants i uh, just wish to share so this is the data which i took from the nmpb so amrita satavri vasa pipali krishna prin saliparni titraka goksura so these are the this is the consumption in terms that that this is that we have to bring uh, this uh, uh, plant into the 
more, more commercialization through the cultivation by developing the high varieties and all. Some of the items that face scarcity in the Ayurvedic industry. The point I was highlighting that we have to be careful that uh, we have not to exploit to the extent we have to find out the alternative medicine to these plants. And if you see here, the most of the things, these things that the mostly the root, bark, these are being used. And ultimately, what will happen? This is the over exploitation, and that will lead to you know, the, the depletion of these species. Therefore, considering these, the, uh, the list of 32 prioritized species for cultivation in India uh, has been uh, prepared by the NMP. Uh, these are Amla, Soga, Suganda, Atis, Bail, Bhumi, Amulaki, Brahmi, Chandan, Tirata, Draulidi, Gloya, Gudmar, Google, Isabul, Jetmari, Kalahari, and all these uh, cases. Hello. 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 अरे यार कोई तो बोलो. ओ भाई क्या हो गया? Hello. What happened? Hello. Sir, I think uh, he got disconnected. उनको रिक्वेस्ट करते हैं फिर से कनेक्ट करेगा आई थिंक ही इज ट्राइंग नो ही इज नॉट वो शायद बोले ही जा रहे होंगे ना उन्हें पता ही नहीं होगा नॉट सब को पता ही नहीं देन कुछ आया तो नेम दिस will be there. Uh, the formation happened in the slides. So, because the, I think the time limitation will also be there. I will be quickly touch it. Sir, I think uh, you can no tell limited. me the time, sir. Then I do summarize. So, uh, lycopene, lutein, quercetin, anthocyanins, so many, these are these, Moringa auriferia, this again, this slide has become. Noni, Noni is the another uh, very, you know, quite popular. What uh, sir? Dr. Saab, your oh. net was not behaving, now it's okay, go ahead. Some problem with the net. गायब ही हो गया हेलो हाँ सर हाँ गायब हो गया गायब हो जाता है आपका नेट हेलो हेलो अभी अभी आया सर ओके सर थैंक यू थैंक यू So noni, noni is the another nutraceutical, and uh, another is the bramphal. Uh, that is named uh, after the uh, name of Professor Bramsing Sebakthon. Is the one plant basically which had the wider application. I could not include the slides. It is very important since I am in the Kashmir and the Ladakh. The people, the, the this uh, so in so diverse region, the Sebakthon. Is being introduced, and uh, we are proud that sir, this uh, fruit is named uh, after your name, known as now Rampal. So, 
this is the work uh, we had done with uh, dr kalia with another natp project we, we are having a new pharmaceutical project so we developed a different technology uh, from the lycopin and uh, the black carrot also the anthocyanins so, so uh, i attempted to have some of the slides and uh, one of the plant uh, we have taken the jam jamun this uh, we try to establish you know through the by identification the secondary metabolites of the jamun because we we know very well that the jamun is quite effective in the the diabetes and the many other diseases so we try to develop the nutraceutical based on the jamun also this is the slide of one or after this is the application of the noni so quickly i was just uh, highlighting that the different uh, plants as the sir has uh, rightly told that these are the diverse five plants and we can be grown in all the areas of this then i just summarized the what so sort of the plants can be grown in the different states maharashtra i listed so it will take more time so i'll quickly say uh, that uh, to complete it gujarat i had summarized this sir i will quickly go through this uh, rajasthan i had summarized it ap bihar karnataka just look at madhya pradesh chatisgarh telangana and uh, the institutes which are involved in that of course uh, one of the uh, institute uh, the, uh, the medicine aromatic plant the icr directorate and the cmap and beside that uh, the contribution of uh, this is also remarkable the indian institute of integrative medicine which earlier known as the rr jammu and uh, beside this the nbri they had also contributed towards the development of the medicinal aromatic plants and the history of the mantha is quite popular with the contribution of cmap is remarkable for the promotion of the mantha so this was about the institute i think you are familiar these are the certain uh, crops basically mandated crops i had already discussed with you these are the acrip for the different centers which are contributing towards that about uh, these plants we have discussed the germ plants we had also discussed with that now coming to this uh, that uh, topic again the happiness sir i told the happiness okay because it is not always that health is wealth is uh, everybody understand and sometimes the wealth is not everything that is also understandable but minimum wealth in certain can certainly can bring the happiness to the farmers as the our uh, prime minister's uh, view point is that to doubling the farmer's income so how the, the crop diversification sir has was highlighting that how it can contribute you know in the medicinal plants are the good candidates uh, who can contribute you know to increase the farmers income so these are more profitable than in many field crop candidates for intercropping supplementary not supplementary system because if you say the farmers that you know in, in view of this particular crops so you grow this or the cultivate this particular crop that, that will not be acceptable but if we can work for the complementary or supplement the, then the acceptability will be the adoption of the technology will be more it's go for the value addition adoption adapt, adaptable to marginal soils again i to summarize you know the different uh, this can be grown anywhere the moisture is there salinity is there solid so so this it is as degraded land so these are the good, good candidates where anything can not be grown the medicinal plants can be adopted and any and any circumstances you can basically rely upon and this can be pr pr promoted basically so these are different plant promising medicinal aromatic plants which can be grown in the environment stress and degraded soil conditions and the country the institutes different institutes had also developed as per the requirement of the diversified uh, you know the climate the different types of varieties which are suitable for the different regions so i summarize this uh, these and this the varietal work has the icr's contribution is commendable and the cmap contribution and i discussed the some of the name they come uh, their contribution is commendable in these are the listed improved varieties i just summarize the different varieties which are being used by the farmers and another thing is that you said nothing is any limitation it can be grown in either kharif season the rabi season crop season so farmer has the choice so if the farmers adopt the technology of cultivation of these medicinal plants certainly i am very sure that and confident that the, the their income will certainly be increased 
land degradation land we know very well and these are the more specifically i had uh, collected the information from the literature which can be specifically used the degraded lands where the afforestation can be used for the reclamation of the land and uh, not only that they will provide you know the different uh, source of the medicinal medicines crop diversification is another example intercropping of the black gram in the pamarosa intercropping patchouli in banana economics has also been worked out and uh, some this uh, aloe vera is being used against the asparagus production horticulture with multi story cropping system this is another area where the medicinal plants can be fit into hedgerow cultivation of medicinal plants by the tarbar this tribal farmers and sometimes you know that we see that the some of the lands uh, which go waste basically the burns and all so the medicinal plants can be grow like this uh, <clears throat> asparagus that is uh, the you know this uh, creeper type of the plants and medicinal plants can be grown there and uh, land diversification by the tribal farmers at the while i was at the anand so we attempted to diversify the crops earlier there was the, some problems of the wild pig and the this uh, neil guy etc so we promoted for the cultivation of the this andrographis paniculata there and uh, because of the beta test uh, this uh, crop was saved Diamonds again another uh, agroforestry, including medicinal plants. So I won't go in the detail. Uh, the agroforestry, is, uh, medicinal plants can be the key component of the agroforestry. <clears throat> These uh, experiments we had uh, tried in our farms at the uh, at, uh, at uh, this, uh, directed medicinal aromatic plants. The uh, different crops can be grown uh, in between. trees along with the trees and all so trees species these are the different trees species which can be grown and uh, agro very well fit into the agroforestry system fodder legumes the neems and these are the different uh, thing so in last i acknowledge the icr dmapr icr iri ipft and uh, once again profusely thanks professor ram singh ji and uh, my senior colleague uh, dr kalia and uh, i am thankful to dr kalia because he expressed a lot of good points about me for that i don't deserve but uh, anyway thank you very much for inviting me this uh, wonderful uh, interaction sir thank you very much sir thank you dr jitendra kumar for taking us to the world of herb herbals and plant medicine and their cultivation and what not very complex so sharing karu sir main isko hide kar sakta hu in i can hide i can see you sir hmm hello you stop sharing i uh, stop now is 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 okay sir ha sir main aapko nahi dekh pa raha hu sharing yes ha koi nahi uh, wonderful presentation and uh, you have touched almost uh, uh, 95% of the uh, medicinal ar aromatic plant different aspects 5% is still silent one uh, because it's not possible to uh, uh, touch upon all the uh, good aspects of medicinal and aromatic plant because they are the treasure uh, uh, i will talk uh, a little later now i request dr kalia ji just in uh, few points highlight his talks in few points otherwise one can talk along i know dr kalia if he start talking uh, on single plant he will have it uh, okay great aman ko kar rahe hain shiva this is uh, dr kalia side eh, from california okay Okay, okay. Now you you unmute, unmute. Ah, now you speak. You speak, sir. One minute, sir. Yes. Hello. Uh, thank you, sir. I think uh, we had a wonderful presentation uh, from Professor Jitendra Kumar ji, who has wide experience on working on uh, bioactive compound, nutraceutical compounds. 
as he has highlighted that at IRA also they have been uh, their group has been very active and uh, uh, this is secondary uh, horticulture we can say say that uh, we are moving forward these are the future uh, aspects although a lot of work has been done but uh, still there is a lot of uh, uh, lot more to be done in this aspects uh, because these crops has value uh, as he has uh, highlighted in ayurveda indian medicines and uh, the literacy level in india has increased and people want to uh, uh, handle their health through their diet or uh, through plant based uh, medicines rather than uh, synthetic medicines so in that aspect uh, uh, this uh, talk has been wonderful and i hope that uh, the viewers who had been listening they might have been benefited quite a lot and he has touched not one angle but uh, all angle from cultivation point of view uh, from the rural point point of view and how these plants can be uh, useful for from uh, rural farmers taking in uh, crop diversification with the different aspects with agroforestry as well and lot of species uh, from the tropical subtropical temperate and alpine areas where they are suitable in different states also he has highlighted which are the medicinal and aromatic plants which are uh, uh, important uh, state wise district wise and that gives a lot of uh, potential as a lot of emphasis are also given by government on uh, these ma medicinal and aromatic plants because they have value in uh, pharmaceutical industry in cosmetic industry in uh, nutraceutical uh, the, these uh, industrial aspects especially from nutraceutical point of view where uh, the utility of bioactive compounds is tremendous uh, i think uh, the uh, and all of and a lot of uh, the plants which he has uh, discussed uh, giving details of their properties medicinal properties and uh, also the area and uh, uh, production productivity aspects he has uh, uh, done tremendously well which uh, gives good knowledge and we have also been educated with this with a lot of species and uh, the viewers might have been uh, quite uh, educated uh, with this uh, uh, talk on different uh, aspects of uh, medicinal and aromatic plants uh, which uh, not only benefits uh, uh, the um, uh, the industry because the industrial development uh, is mainly based on uh, these plants which are suitable for different uh, uh, aspects as has been uh, highlighted uh, which is very important aspects and uh, uh, the as the knowledge in the recent past based on especially these uh, institution that we have uh, uh, icr institution uh, of uh, directorate of medicinal and aromatic plants and cmap a uh, lot of efforts has gone into on these plants but a uh, lot uh, still more needs to be done in most of the plants uh, that we need to bring out important uh, uh, improved varieties uh, so that more uh, bioactive uh, compounds which has been mentioned can be harvested and extracted and uh, used by the industry so i think we have had a wonderful talk from professor jitendra kumar and i am sure that the viewers must have been educated quite a lot and this is an excellent talk in the series which closes the series all series also with this very important talk which is useful and helpful for the industrial development of the country as also for the uh, population uh, to manage their health uh, through uh, these uh, nutraceutical compounds which has been highlighted from different crop plants so with that i thank uh, for excellent presentation from professor jitinder kumar on medicinal and aromatic plants for happiness and health thank you very much thank you dr kalia uh, miss sivangi if some question are there can you display Sir, your sound is not coming. Hello. Anyway, question is there on that uh, screen. Naksab, you can read the question and uh, this one. So medicinal Hello. plants have a lot of chemicals and alkaloids. Why research on these compounds for treatment for different diseases in human beings are very less. It's not like that. The morphine is being used. There, there are the many alkaloids and diets. Heightened the number of the 
samples which are being used are for the different uh, uh, this this the belonging to different alcohol alkaloids you know for the different diseases it's not that okay next question so only thing, only next. thing only thing is that or the spices and the condiments okay. which are used using daily in our kitchen have good medicinal value how the medicinal can can be part of the mother kitchen definitely sir i do agree in the beginning itself i had highlighted that the, our system you know particularly the vegetarian people they have already encompassed you know a number of the secondary metabolites so the different spices if you take to see starting from the ascorbida right. you start from the turmeric you start from the ginger you start from the right. onion you start from the uh, uh, this uh, garlic and so on this uh, list is endless so we we are that that certainly and uh, that is the proven thing also while the covid case although i am not having the scientific evidence that this particular uh, the secondary metabolites of the spices is uh, you know uh, is uh, responsible for preventing us but the indian being having the more immunity because of these we are taking all these materials already through our food so that uh, give us the good immuno modulatory uh, you know this so that are the preventive we are rightly any pointed other, out so, any other question parveen kumar misra ji yeah you can establish the medicinal plant nursery the i highlighted that one institute is the center institute of medicinal aromatic plant lucknow i don't know where is your location this what but, but to kvk masuda where it is you just see that you can contact them you have to have the quality plant material okay so the what sort of the this uh, material you want to have what is the cmap anand is the director of dmapr and if uh, <laughs> this jammu if uh, that area is there i don't know in which uh, this uh, uh, kvk in which state it it, it, it falls and uh, beside that all india coordinated research programs are there and uh, the we are having 23 centers all over the country wherein you can contact uh, i have uh, this uh, the website of the icr dmpr you will see the 23 acrip programs yeah ayodhya then you contact the cmap not only cmap let him go to the uh, ndut ndut yeah. that acharya narendra dev university of agriculture and technology okay. they are also the i think they are doing something on that but they can have from the npr and the cmap so oh, same same cmap in lucknow botanical Ajay. garden in lucknow so yes, yes. he is the, he is there uh, surrounded by the uh i think the research on medicinal plant and yes, yes, we can yes. go yes sir he is in a good, good position ha huh. any other question uh can i get this ppt uh, that is between uh, dr uh, uh, jitendra ji and you you can correspond with him we don't uh, say anything uh, next one please So that's it for now. We don't have any more questions. Okay. If there are no more question, it's good. And now the time has come that I have to thank profusely everybody. Let me talk first about this talk. This talk uh, uh, is full of information, and uh, I don't know how oh, Dr. Jitendra Kumar managed. to cover almost all aspects of uh, medicinal plant in limited or allotted time <laughs> it speaks of the depth of the knowledge the speaker has got i congratulate him he is a <clears throat> i think uh, well versed with the things starting from cultivation of sodic soil and waste land and what not and he uh, entered into deep into the chemistry of that uh so what is left that thing so he has got a thorough knowledge of that i think uh, uh, i i i uh, on my personal behalf and on behalf of the bshf i congratulate him for uh, giving uh, such a extraordinary talk and uh, uh, this is the last talk but not the least one um, of this series for for its series and he has rightly highlighted <coughs> happiness happiness uh, you get better happiness with these herbs uh, dr pandey also raised the 
uh, points in kitchen and what not and everywhere and we indians are fond of herbs whether it is a kitchen or whether it is just cleaning the teeth with the name stick the datu nakshatra in countryside all those things are there we are fond of the natural uh, medicine or herbal medicine and that is why uh, comparatively we have got lesser disease than uh, the other advanced countries and uh, government of india is rightly laying emphasis on this med- promotion of medicinal plant through different schemes and one of the scheme he has mentioned the national medicinal plant board uh, is going on and that ayurveda uh, ministry also is separate and uh, even the amji system of uh, the medicine has been recognized we are all on this system the plant is the basic one now. the medicine comes up coming out with the uh, plant the best thing which i liked in this presentation is that the plant is a better chemist and scientist that's what he has said and i think is true and we can't compete with the nature i give the credit to the nature because these herbs and plants are all creation of the nature so it's damn difficult to compete with the nature but nature is kind to us that uh, uh, nature has given almost all things to meet our requirement is only for us to work for if we work we get it if we don't work we don't get it it has got some meaning so friends we had wonderful presentation from professor uh, <coughs> jitendra kumar ji i profusely thank him and now this uh, the last talk of the forest series uh, uh, which uh, dealt with the, uh, health and happiness and most of the talks were wonderful anyway uh, today is the last webinar of this series for h and bhf and myself would like to thank the sponsor bear semenis and co organizers my colleague dr pitam kalia and dr shalendra rajan ji and all the speakers and miss shivangi shankar the technical support for their contributions in purpose fully completing and concluding the series i congratulate them i congratulate them without any hassle without any major drawback without any mishap uh, we have completed the series and i keep on getting lot of appreciation and encouragement to continue that so uh, uh, in this series if i don't thank the speaker that will be ingested so last but not the least we are we when i say the bshf myself and the co organizers we are all indebted to the viewers as well as to the speakers if viewers are not there what is the use of giving the webinar if the speakers have not done justice this there won't be a quality so we are really thankful to these two categories speakers as well as viewers nice of you and we expect similar support and cooperation if not better in the coming series which we are going to start we means the bshf we call it 5h means the fifth one and the series name we have decided as future <coughs> horticulture and it is going to start pro 10th july 2022 at 1100 hours i request all of you who are interested people to take advantage of that uh, can you display the flyer if it is ready for the next webinar it's there sir is there okay good so the uh, one can see in this <laughs> that the future horticulture in india 
It's not the future horticulture. Main emphasis is on technology. The world is changing. So is the horticulture. And we have to make progress. So we will be dealing with the, what will be the futuristic horticulture and what the scientists will be contributing to that. It will be a very interesting uh, a webinar, I tell you. And um, uh, scientist of caliber and with the uh, vast experience and uh, vision will be taking or participating uh, in this uh, webinar series. I welcome you all uh, for this webinar. So on my personal behalf and on behalf of BSHF, I thank one and all for your cooperation in completion of the 4-H series and invite you for the next one. With these words, I thank one and all. Best of thank you. Good night. Thank you, sir. Good night. Good day. Thank you. Namaskar. Namaskar.